Now, Venezuela was once a thriving, prosperous country, but under socialist leaders like Hugo Chavez and now Nicolas Maduro, the government's seizure of companies meant that when their main resource, oil, saw volatility, well, the economy collapsed. Now nearly 9 in 10 Venezuelans live in poverty. Now, food is so scarce, reports say that some have been forced to eat pigeons and cats they find in the street. Now, Maduro has only tightened his grip, imprisoning political opponents, and all of this leading to violent clashes. And the global community, including the U.S., has lined up behind opposition leader Juan Guaido. Now, despite all that, Congresswoman Ilan Omar is, well, you guessed it, blaming us. A lot of the policies uh, that we have put in place has kind of helped lead um, the devastation in Venezuela. And we've sort of set the stage um, for where we are arriving today. Uh, this um, particular bullying and the use of, of sanctions. Here now, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. Mr. Secretary, thank you for being with us tonight. Now, when you hear a member of the House of Representatives put the blame squarely on the, quote, bullies in the United States, what we're seeing tonight in uh, Venezuela, what's your reaction? So the nicest thing I could say is it's unbelievable ignorance. It's just factually wrong. Uh, you, you hit it in your opening, Laura. Uh, the problems in Venezuela have been years in the making. It's been a socialist regime, first with Chavez, now with Maduro. Uh, the destruction of a net weight, net wealthy nation, the, the nation with more oil reserves than any other country in the world. Beautiful country, And too. a beautiful country with uh, beautiful real estate, beautiful shorelines, all kinds of opportunity uh, for uh, a member of Congress who, frankly, one who sits on a, an important national security committee to make a statement blaming America first in this way. Uh, it's not only ignorant, it's disgusting. What can you tell us tonight? Uh, still not a successful transition in Venezuela. Uh, Guaido was the guy that the community, the world community chose. Why is he the right one at the right time? So the world community has certainly supported him, but the Venezuelan people chose him through their national assembly and through their constitutional process. Uh, the military didn't uh, fracture in the way that we would hope, um, but it's just a matter of time. Uh, it, it's, it's the case that Maduro may rule for a little while longer, but he's not going to govern. Uh, structurally, there's no way he stays in power. It's time for him to leave. Uh, and we need the Cubans and the Russians to follow him out the door. Now, to Americans who say, look, we have a problem at our southern border. We've got 100,000 people a month being apprehended and released into the country. Why are we focusing at all on Venezuela? What do you say to them? So we can do more than one thing at a time. We have an obligation to secure our southern border. Uh, but we've had three million people, three million migrants leave Venezuela, too. They will end up somewhere today. They're in Colombia, Chile, Peru. Uh, we, we have an important responsibility in Venezuela. First, um, we want to support uh, democracy in South America. It's important for our vital national security interests. Uh, but it's also the case when we see humanitarian crises like this, the American people understand that taking food and providing humanitarian support is something that's in our nature. Uh, I want to move on to another topic, which is China, something that uh, you've been addressing lately. Uh, I've been talking about this for 20 years, but Joe Biden doesn't seem to think China is a big threat. Let's watch. China is going to eat our lunch? Come on, man. They can't even figure out how to deal with the, 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 the fact that they have this great division between the China Sea and the mountains in the east, I mean, in the west. I mean, I, you know, they're not bad folks, folks, but guess what? They're not a they're, they're not, not, they're competition for us. Uh, I don't even know. I don't personally know what to say about that, but China, not a threat to the United States. What is the truth there? President Trump uh, and our administration has taken the threat from China very, very seriously, very different from what uh, we just heard there. They want it. He's, in the, he's leading in the polls. Uh, we, we, we understand the threat. There, there's a trade imbalance that President Trump has taken on to try and get fair and reciprocal trade between the United States and China. Uh, the fact that the Chinese are working to put their systems in networks all across the world so they can steal your information and my information. How about and an American in, universities? And, and American universities to, to feed this information back into their system. Uh, you've talked about this. We've talked about uh, a, a million of their ethnic minorities being held in re-education camps in Jiangxing. Th this, is, this is stuff that is reminiscent of the 1930s. They present uh, a real challenge to the United States, and this administration is prepared to take this on. Uh, American high-tech companies in China, there's a lot of concern that there has been, I guess, inadvertent assistance to the communist regime there as they seek to dominate 
part of their Belt and Road Initiative, dominate every major industry, including space and weaponry, artificial intelligence. What can you tell us about the concerns about American big tech going to China, setting up shop? We've talked about this, and we've gone out to talk to each of these businesses. Uh, Laura, it's, it's true. I think America was slow to recognize this challenge. The previous administration, the Obama administration, just didn't want to touch it. Uh, the first step is to make these businesses aware. This is what this technology is being used for. Here's who you're selling it to. The separation between private companies and government doesn't exist there, not remotely like we have in the United States. And so we've made clear to them uh, that their technology is being used in ways that they may not be aware of. And the impact, not only the impact it has for American national security, but the impact it will have on their business and the business's reputation is very real. And, Mr. Secretary, I also want to get your reaction to something one of your predecessors said last night on MSNBC. Watch. Why should Russia have all the fun? And since Russia is clearly backing Republicans, why don't we ask China to back us? Not only that, China, if you're listening, why don't you get Trump's tax return? Let's have a great power contest, and let's get the Chinese in on the side of somebody else. A leading Democrat, she was on for an hour last night, um, the great power contest, asking China to dump the tax returns. So there is a great power contest taking place. I think that's true. I only wish when she was Secretary of State she would have taken it on <laughs> instead of allowing it to get where it is today and uh, turning a willful blind eye to that. Uh, we're taking this seriously. I, I hadn't heard those comments before. Uh, they don't remotely sound like what, um, what ought to be done by America, and they're certainly not what President Trump and this administration are going to do to make sure we keep America safe, that we recognize China uh, is a 1.5 billion people. There will be commerce between the two countries, but we've got to make sure that America is prepared uh, so that we can continue to be uh, the world's leading power 10, 20, 50 years from now. Are you having more fun now than you were as CIA director? I was thinking about that. Yeah. If I could choose between one or the other, like, what's more, what's more fun? Uh, they're very different jobs. I've enjoyed them both. Oh, what a <laughs> diplomat. Uh, Mr. Secretary, thanks for being Thank here tonight. Much, really Lord. appreciate it.